Now, when we were writing equations of lines, there, it's nice to be able to take you know, data that is linear, and that means it can be represented by a line, and we can take that and come up with the equation that describes that. That way, you can extrapolate and interpret data for larger numbers than what's just given here. For example, a local summer camp wants to print t-shirts through an online retailer, and there's a direct, there's a linear relationship between the number of shirts and how much things cost. And that makes sense. The more shirts you order, the more it's going to cost, right? Now it says the camp wants 10 t-shirts and it's going to cost $32.50. But if they want 21 shirts, it's going to cost $60. And I want to write an equation that describes this relationship. Now when you see stuff like this, you need to be able to take the data and interpret that in a graphical sense. So one of the things that we can do here is this. Write your variables, write your ordered pairs. So we could very easily say something like this. If x is the number of t-shirts, y is equal to what? The total cost. Y is the total cost. Now if that's the case, look at the information that I gave you here. We know that if you order 10 shirts, it's going to cost what? 32 Or if you order 21 shirts, it's going to cost what? $60. $60. Now, I'm writing these guys as ordered pairs. Because if you order 10 shirts, this is the cost. You order 21 shirts, this is the cost. Are you with me? Now, if I say that this is a linear relationship, that means that these two points would fall on the same what? Line. line. And you know how to write the equation of a line. Mm -hmm. You sure do. This is just like the problems that we did earlier. We did these yesterday as well. How can I get the equation of a line through just two points? Um, so I hear you guys talking about using the formula for the slope. The change in y over the change in x. So in this case, what's y2? 60 minus 3250 32 over what? 21 minus 10. We kind of expect this to be a positive slope, right? The more shirts you order, the more expensive. Okay. What's 60 minus 3250? Twenty-seven fifty. What's twenty-one minus ten? And when you do this division, what do you come up with? The unit price. You do come with the unit price because this is really cost, and this is number of shirts, right? So what is it? What's twenty-seven fifty divided by eleven? Two point five, right? So it's basically it's two and a half dollars per shirt. Do you all agree? But that's really my slope. That's what slope is. Slope is a rate, right? So I can take this slope and I can find basically my y-intercept, right? Well, let's let's do that. Let's do the fun math, huh? Look, look, I'll make it easy for you. Check this out. If you do y equals mx plus b, use this first point right here, 10 and 32.50. So y is 3250. Your m is 250. Your x is 10, and your b is what we're trying to find, right? Well, look, this is 32.50 is equal to what? So minus 25 means that my B is what? 7.5. So there's my B, and there's my slope, basically. So that means Y equals what? Y equals 2.5x plus 
Now, what does that mean? What does y equals 2.5x plus 750 mean? Y represents the total cost. What's the 250? The unit price. The unit price is the cost per shirt. What's the 750 here? That's the variation. No, not the variation. Tax. Well, the tax would be based on a per shirt thing, right? Mm -hmm. But you know, a lot of times when you order from online retailers, it, it there may be just like a, a flat cost for shipping or processing and handling, right? So this. Retailer, it doesn't matter, they don't care how many shirts you order, if it's one shirt or if it's a thousand shirts, they're just going to charge you 750. Okay? So this represents a real world problem that we could easily run into. Now, I know that you guys, well, some places the more shirts you order, the cheaper it is. I understand that. But a lot of places you can find this is a, a set cost, and this is a unit cost. So I could take this guy and I could say, you know what? What if they want 100 shirts? How much would it cost them to make 100 shirts? Well, that's 250 times 100 plus 750. So 250 plus 750 is going to cost them how much? $257.50. $257.50. So they could take that information and figure out, all right, you know what? If we make more shirts, it's still going to be the same cost per shirt, but this, this fixed cost right here starts to be kind of diminished per shirt, the more shirts you order, right? And you, you've done this before. If I order, you know, once a day for three days, or if I just make one big order on one day, it's going to make more sense to do one big order.